Hello students. In the last video, we introduced you to the null factor law and showed you how we can use that to help us solve some quadratic equations. And it turns out we can also use the null factor law in uh, to help us solve these equations. Now let's have a look at this one in the upper left here. Now you might notice that we don't have um, a and B multiplied together. We need A times B equals zero in order to use it. But in fact, I have an X squared plus eight X equals zero. So the first thing I have to do is turn this sum into a product. And hopefully you remember that we do that by factorizing. So what I have to do is rewrite X squared plus eight X in factorized form. So the common factor is X What's left behind in the brackets is x plus 8 equals 0. And now we've got factorized form. So once again, we can now say we've got a multiplied by b equals 0. And we can carry on as before. So therefore, x equals 0 or x plus 8 equals zero. That's already a solution. Here we have to say, well, if x plus eight is zero, x must be negative eight. Just copy this solution down, x equals zero. And there's our two solutions, either x is zero or x is negative eight. So on this page, we have one extra step. The expression that you're given on the left-hand side is in expanded form. So the first thing you have to do is factorize it. Once you've done that, you can carry on as before. So why don't you stop the video and have a go at the remaining three questions. This little one down here in red is a little bit more challenging. Okay, students, let's see how we went. Okay, so we start with this one. So 3x squared take 9x. I'll factorize this one completely. So I can take out a common factor of 3x. And that leaves x take 3. I'll write that a bit more neatly. x take 3 equals 0. Let's just do a quick check. 3x times x is 3x squared, 3x take 3 is 9x. Yep, so all that uh, seems to work. And now as before, either 3x equals 0 or x take 3 equals 0. Okay, looking at this first equation, 3 times sub number equals 0. Well, the only number where that's that makes that true is x equals 0. And some number minus 3 is 0. That must be x equals 3. So there's the two solutions to that equation. OK, uh, similar one here. The only common factor in these two terms is x. And that leaves 2x plus 5 in the brackets. So therefore, x equals 0 or 2x plus 5 equals 0. OK, so there's one solution. We have to solve this one. So we subtract 5 from both sides. And plus 5 minus 5 goes to 0. So 2x equals negative 5. Divide by 2. I might just squeeze it in. x equals negative 5 halves. We just copy that one down. And we do have two solutions to that equation, either x equals 0 or x equals negative 5 halves. OK, what about the challenge question here? Well, effectively, if you look at the other three um, questions on the sheet, what we have to have is a 0 on the right hand side. So we don't have that here. The way we get the 0 on the right hand side is we just subtract 7x from that side. 7x takes 7x is 0. But you can't subtract 7x from the right side unless you also subtract it from the left side. 
and that gives us oops that gives us x squared takes 7x on the left equals and 7x takes 7x 0 on the right so we couldn't solve that equation in that form but by rewriting it we now can we take out a common factor of x leaving behind x takes 7 therefore x equals 0 or x takes 7 equals 0 okay well there's one solution and the other solution is going to be x equals 7 to make that second equation true and that's the solution to the last equation so the null factor law is a very powerful uh, tool for helping us to solve quadratic equations so what we're going to go on to in the next video is looking at a couple of special cases um, and these are ones you've actually looked at by expanding but so far we haven't actually looked at how we can use these special cases uh, to factorize. So that's going to be what we'll be focusing on in the next video.